All right, last one here. It's a short one. Let's go for it. Hey guys, it's Shaylin. I'm here today with another writing video. Today I've got a pretty quick video. I wanted to talk about a pacing hack that is so easy and so straightforward. This is one of those writing tips that like changed my life. I mean, it wasn't really a tip. I, to be fair, I just realized this. But to be fair, it doesn't take a genius to realize this because it's extremely obvious. And yet, I've never heard anyone say this before. You know, it's almost like too obvious to realize. Oh, but once I started using this hack, I became good at something that I used to be terrible at. I, I used to be very bad at pacing. Um, I money. considered pacing one of my greatest weaknesses. I had very large pacing issues in all my novels. Uh, the pacing was just a mess. When I started doing this, suddenly the feedback on my work was great pacing consistently over and over. Very consistent feedback that I've gotten on my novel from everyone who's read it is that the pacing is really consistent and strong. And I was like stunned when I first started getting this feedback because pacing used to be something I really struggled with. And this is the thing that changed my ability to pace. And it is the simplest tip. Know what a chapter is in your book and do it consistently. Chapters uh, are such uh, a crucial tool and we don't really talk about them enough. And I think that the way a lot of people see chapters is in a counterproductive way. And I, I get this sense from the way that I used to see chapters and a lot of questions that I get. A lot of people worried that their chapters are too long or too short. There is no set length that a chapter needs to be. And I think the, the, the big mistake that uh, I used to make is that I saw chapters as a tool for readability that essentially a chapter ended at a natural break for the reader. I didn't see chapters as a consistent tool to pace the book, that the chapters were the sections of the book that you could use in a repeatable way in order to ensure consistent pacing. I think the biggest mistake you can make with chapters is think that there's a set thing chapters need to be. Like chapters need to be this length. They don't. A chapter can be like literally as long or short as you need. What you want to do with chapters is figure out what a chapter All right, I'm going to stop her here for a second because she said a couple of things that I'm not 100% sure I'm on board with fully. Maybe she'll change my mind here. But the idea of a chapter being too long or too short, I 100% believe that there is a too short of a chapter. And she might have just been kind of like, you know, generalizing. But I've read a chapter. I've read, no, I've read a number of chapters that do this where it's like a page or a page and a half and i'm like this is not a chapter this is this is not a chapter like i get that this is kind of like contained like this is not a part of the scene from the previous chapter and this is not a part of the scene of the next chapter i do get that but this is not long enough like this is just not long enough um And if you're ha if if that happens to come up, if you have a chapter that's like a page or a page and a half, it, I guess it kind of depends on the length of your book, right? And like the average length of your other chapters. But if you have a short chapter, think of: Is there any other way I can get this information into the book? Can I break this information up? Like, can I put some of it in earlier? Can I put some of it in later and like kind of spread it out a little bit? Or do it? Does it have to be like this here? If that's the case, is there a way I can rewrite it to where it does thematically fit in with the chapter before the chapter after? Is there any way for me to elongate this a little bit? Right? Those kind of things are are where like just too short of chapters. Really, uh, there is such a thing. It, it feels weird. It feels like. Where's the rest of it? You know, you just, you just, I, 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 I remember scrolling down and just going, wait a minute, I'm on the next chapter already. Where, where, where what happened to the rest of it? As far as too long of chapters, there is such a thing as too long of chapters. Um, really, too long of chapters again depends on the genre, though. So, like my chapters on average are like four and a half thousand words. Um. I think actually some of them, some of them, I, I do what I can to make it to where they do not ever go over five and a half. Like five and a half is really, really pushing it. Um, 
I try I I try to go at five thousand is kind of like my soft cap, and then five and a half is my hard cap. I guess you could say. Um, so yeah, four and a half is usually where my chapters are. Four and a half to five is usually where they are, and that's fantasy though. If it's if I'm writing a romance, I'm usually more in like the one and a half to two and a half thousand. So I'm right around two thousand words per chapter in those, right? But it it can make it to where if you, if you if the chapter just keeps on going at this so much, that can go to like reader burnout. You know, if you if you have a romance book and the chapters are like five thousand words a piece, that reader is not used to reading that big of chapters, you know. They're used to reading about two thousand words a chapter in romance novels. Um, so they're not gonna have that tolerance to to not seeing like, oh, next chapter and then next chapter and then I you know they're used to having chapters kind of fly by, right? While um, fantasy readers, sci fantasy and sci-fi readers are a little more used to staying in the chapter, kind of getting settled in and, and learning about things and whatever else. So it depends on the genre, but there is also too long of a thing. If, if that person just kind of feels like, man, I've been here for a long time and I really want out, like I, I, you know, I kind of how she said, like you know, you look for a break for the for the reader. If you don't find that break at the right time, the reader's gonna be like, man, I wish, man, I, I, I kind of wish it ended a couple pages ago, man. I, I don't want to. How much longer? I've I've done that before too in a book where I've had to like flip a couple pages and been like, okay, it ends here. Okay, I, I'll I'll keep reading, but boy, this chapter is long, you know, and that's not good. Chapter is in. And, I'll also just add on the reason that's not good is because a lot of times I've done this myself. A lot of times when they get to the end of that chapter, they put the book down and any time that the reader puts the book down, that is a chance that they never pick it back up. Right. And obviously we can't, we can't stop them from putting it down. They have to go to bed at some point, right? They have to go to sleep at some point in their life, but it would be fantastic if you could get a reader to open your book and then close it and have read the entire thing in one sitting. Um, that's typically not going to happen. Of oh, course, that's you know that's 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 very rare. Um, but I have done that before with my own with books that I've read where I just I couldn't put it down. I just had to keep going. But there have been times where I didn't need to go to bed, but I got to the end of a chapter and I was like, you know what? I need a break from reading because that was a lot that drained me, you know, so you got to watch out for draining the uh, the reader. Your book. A chapter is just like a division of a novel. So what you want to do when you start writing a novel is ask what do chapters mean in my book? Not just what is the average chapter length that I'm going for, though if you know what the chapters do, you will likely have a consistent average chapter length, but what is the purpose of a chapter? in relation to my yeah. pacing. I've talked Yeah, that's a that's a really great question to ask is what is this chapter's purpose? That's a great question to ask. I would say that in my ghostwriting, um one of the one of the projects I've been on for a while is they have a set number of words that they want and it kind of it, you know they have like a you know hey if you're 50 over 50 under that's fine but they really want you to get somewhere close to this this number that they give you um and it's for every single chapter it's the it's they just basically were like here's how many words we want to have and we're just going to divide it by this number of chapters there it is you're gonna you're even even when they have like a synopsis of the chapter be this long versus one that's this long as the writer, you still have to make both of those chapters the same length. Um, so it can be a challenge sometimes. I talked about this before in my novel Honey Vinegar, and I did this because I was discovery writing the book, which is something I find funny just because, you know, plotting elitists will say that like pantsed books have terrible structure and terrible pacing, but my plotted books had terrible pacing, and my pantsed novel that I discovery wrote had really great pacing. And that's been consistent feedback that I've gotten like over and over again. Yeah. And it was because I did this thing. 
And I did this thing because I was discovery writing. So I was like, well, I don't have an outline to ensure my pacing is good, even though my outlines never gave me good pacing because I not very i'm not a natural outliner who knows how to outline well um not saying that like outlining is bad for pacing i'm just bad at outlining so i was like i have to find a way to ensure good pacing okay well let me just think about what my chapters are because i'm just writing the book one chapter at a time so if i do that consistently theoretically i should have good pacing so i kind of saw each chapter in that book as a short story in that each one kind of yeah. had a short story structure there was like an inciting incident that would trigger like the event of that chapter there would be an escalation to that mini event, there would be a mini event, and that mini event would kind of cause like the inciting incident of the next chapter. So I saw the structure of my novel as a series of interlinked short stories, where like each short story built upon the the, the overarching narrative. And what- Yeah, that's a really good way to do it. And um, if you go, well, there's different places, but I'll just use this as an example. Um, Kindle Vela is a, it's meant to be basically like a a serial. Um, so you, when you when you're when you're writing on there, you're writing a serial story that can kind of continue on technically forever. But you know, uh, it just kind of depends on how you're, how you're writing it. But you release the story like you know every few days or however often you want to release it. But you release a chapter every every few days or something like that. But what you really want to do is to get people to continue to read is you want to put a really good hook at the end of that chapter to get them to go to the next one. And that is something that you want to do as well in your normal novels. Cause again, we would, we would in the perfect world, we would want them to open the book for the first time and then close it and have read the entire thing. Right? Well, a really good way to doing that is even though you have the end of a chapter and that's a chance for them to put it down, you give them some sort of cliffhanger, some sort of hook, to go to the next chapter to read more, right? Um, and that's not always super easy to do. Um, and I also kind of feel like it can be abusive uh, too, where the reader kind of feels, that they can kind of see that pattern. So I would really not recommend doing it all the time, all the time. Uh, doing it, you know, maybe like 60 to 70% of the time would probably be where you might want to be. Um, probably more so if you're doing like a mystery right you want to you really want to keep them gripped and whatnot all the time but um but making it to where they they want to continue to read is is a balancing act because if they start noticing that you are continuously leaving off on cliffhangers and you keep having like hey you better turn to the next chapter right that can kind of feel like the chapters don't really matter anymore to a certain degree where it's just kind of like, well, even though he had chapter numbers and yeah, even though the chapters even had their own little names, I really felt like I couldn't put the book down because I never really got that sense of like resolution. I never had, I just kind of felt like I was continuously uh, dragged into the next chapter and I, I never got like a breather moment unless it was in the middle of a chapter which isn't a real breather moment because I want to end the chapter, that kind of thing, right? So it is kind of this this balancing act where you have some chapters that do that, some that don't, um, a majority probably that do though, where you you do want to kind of rather than drag the reader, you want to coax them. You want you want them you want them to feel like, you know, they're gonna have fun if they continue to read, right? Rather than rather than hey, if you want to find out, you better keep reading. It's more like hey, don't you want to find out like let's, let's keep going yeah more more of a coaxing rather than a dragging what this gave me was a very consistent unit for my chapters all my chapters kind of had the same thing they had kind of the same consistent structure they all circled around a singular but core event and as a result of the fact that i was viewing them as a short story they all developed information that related to that event so i could have pretty consistent information reveal i also consciously wanted to make sure that my main character made a choice in every chapter so that she was always active and I knew that she was always an active participant on the plot. Because typically the reader will feel the plot moving when the main character is being active and making choices that affect the plot, not just when things are happening. So I did that consistently throughout yeah. the whole book and I kind of saw chapters in this distinct unit. Were they all the same length? No, but 
most of my chapters were between four and six thousand words because they all had the same core building blocks and because i used chapters (laughs) essentially in this really clean way where i knew exactly what a chapter in my book was and i just did that over and over and over and at the points where i wanted the pacing to be faster i could make the chapters a little shorter and make those mini escalations a little faster and at the pace at the points where i wanted the reader sit with things a little longer i could stretch out those mini arcs a little more give them a little more breathing room but overall still have this consistent unit i was able to move my book in a really consistent unit towards the ending and have this consistent pacing throughout now you don't have to use chapters the same way that i did in that book that's the thing and with another book, I use chapters in a completely different way. But when you start a book, ask, okay, what is a chapter in relation to my pacing? Like, how big a step do I take? If you want really slow pacing, maybe you're even going to say, okay, I'm going to have a major event in a three chapter arc. So I'm going to have the first chapter, which is going to be build up to the event. The second chapter will be the event. And then the third chapter will be wind down from the event. And then in the next chapter, I'll start a three chapter arc. And I'll kind of have build up to event, event in the second chapter, wind down in the third chapter. Or maybe you have like, you want really fast pacing. And so you're going to be like, okay, I'm going to have like a key event in every chapter. And my chapters are going to be pretty short, like just two or three scenes. This is going to be the relationship between those scenes. And you're going to be able to keep up a really, really fast pacing. I like to think of this as the book's resting heart rate. Uh, If the plot starts running faster, the heart rate can escalate. And sometimes it needs to rest and slow down, but you have like a resting heart rate that you can kind of play within in order to tighten or relax the pacing at moments of higher intensity or moments where you need rest and breathing space while still having a general consistent heart rate. In every book, a chapter will have a different relationship to the pacing. But before you start writing, whether you're plotting or discovery writing, Ask yourself what the unit of a chapter includes and do that consistently and then manipulate that unit at the points that you want faster or more relaxed pacing. It is the easiest plotting hack of all time. (laughs) It is so easy. All you have to do is just take a moment to think about the form of your book before you start writing. In my other novel that I'm working, chapters work very, very different differently. In that book, the form shifts chapter to chapter to kind of signal like the emotional relationship that the main character has to that moment of her life and how she's processing it. And so for me in that book, a chapter ends at the end of an emotional shift. Every time there is an emotional shift, the chapter needs to end and we start again with a different form. And so the chapters have written consistent lengths but each one focuses on an emotional beat and an emotional state. And because it's a very emotional plot, the book is moving kind of through emotional state tied to emotional state. That's the causality. And so that's as well in the pacing. And you can also use larger divisions in that book. I used parts because my chapters are very, very short in that book and a bit more inconsistent because they literally have different forms. I split the book into six distinct parts that all have a very consistent length and accomplish a similar thing. They all kind of accomplish a significant step in the character relationships. So each arc has a significant change in the main character's relationships with the two core, the two core relationships that the book is exploring. You can also use kind of a nested arc system, which I talked about in a video on structure tips for discovery writers, which I'll leave a link to. You can even do like multiple types of chapter divisions, like parts and then chapters within it, if you want that like extra bit of structure and pacing, which I found helpful in this particular book because the chapters were so short and naturally a little more inconsistent than the like short story style chapters in my previous book. That is the tip. It's so easy. It's like, it's so obvious. The tip is just use chapters. (laughs) It's so (laughs) obvious that I never thought of it for a long time. And once I started doing that, it kind of changed my life. My question for you for this video is how would you describe the unit of a chapter in the book that you are currently writing? Like what goes into a chapter? for you. There's no wrong way to write a chapter. Um, Just understand what a chapter is. I think too many people worry about the wrong or right way to write a chapter when really a chapter depends on your book and you just want to know what that means. But that unit can kind of be whatever you need it to be and can be a tool for you, not just a place to give the reader a break. I for too long saw chapters as the place to give a reader a break when really it was a tool for me to control the pacing and I didn't really take advantage of that. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in another video. Bye. That's a that's a really good piece of advice. Um, using the chapter as a tool is a really good way of looking at it. Um, 
you know, as far as well, as far as pacing goes, I've um I would say I probably get more positive pacing feedback um especially for my second book. The first one did I I did get people saying like the pacing seems pretty slow in the beginning, and I do understand that um it was it was a little slower in the beginning um for the first book. Uh, but as the book went on, people were like, yeah, the pacing is really picking up now. And I really feel it's a lot better, blah, blah, blah. And that probably did come from, from finding those natural breaks better, uh, like where the story kind of wants to, to breathe. Um, it, it's, for me, it's kind of like, if you imagine the story is telling the story, uh, but it can only take the break. It can only take a breather between chapters, right? So like, it's just, it's just saying all the words that you wrote in it. And then finally, when the chapter's over, it goes, <gasps> Oh God. Okay. Chapter four. <laughs> right. Um, that's kind of how I view it is like, when does, when does the book really need to, to have a breath? And then we go to the next chapter, that kind of thing. Um, and, and it kind of does go back to, to like the idea of having like that hook, that grip to the next chapter that coaxes them along to say, Hey, there's more fun in the next chapter. Like you, like you, you've got a little bit of a tease of what's going to happen. Like, you, like we've kind of hinted at what, what we're about to do. So do you want to come do that with us? That's kind of how I, I tease chapters and, you know, that started to play out more as I got my main character further and further away from the starting area, right? From, from his home. Um, and so, so yeah, basically it just, it just kind of, it just kind of worked out to be, uh, more natural in, in those like middle to late chapters. Um, so so yeah, though I, I definitely agree with her that using using the the chapter as a tool is a great idea. Pacing is one of those things that can definitely really hurt a book if you're not doing it right. Um, I don't, I haven't really thought about pacing a whole lot, so I I can't really say much more than I really already have, just because I haven't really given a whole lot of thought. Um, I would, but I I would say that. If you do get feedback that pacing is too slow or pacing is too fast, bear in mind that that is for that reader. That reader felt like the chapter was slow. That reader felt like the chapter was really fast. That's not to say that they're wrong, but it is to say that they might be wrong, right? So don't, if you get like one person saying that it was slow and no one else says anything, no one no one else gives you a, a, like a compliment or anything like that, that doesn't mean that the chapter was slow. Um, but it might, right? Just take a look at that. Like, like I said before in my, in my, like how to respond to, to critiques video, you know, not all critiques are going to be correct. Um, they might not even really be pointing out what they, what is really wrong. They just kind of feel something there and they kind of tell you like, Hey, you know, I, I felt like it was kind of slow here. Um, uh, they might tell you, Hey, I, I, you know, I don't really, I, I didn't really find this character to be interesting or whatever it might be. And it might just be, okay, so I need to reframe how I describe the character or I need to, I just need to cut back a little bit on, on the lines of, of exposition maybe to kind of shorten things up a little bit to get that pacing a little bit more on track. Um, and maybe not even, right? Maybe there's just something going on that they didn't quite word quite right. And you have to kind of, you know, figure it out between different, you know, try, like triangulate between different people's review of what they're saying is kind of like, you know, not quite right. And you can kind of maybe see different people's response to it and say, okay, so different people had different problems, but it kind of all centered around this paragraph. There's something wrong with this paragraph here. I should probably 
rewrite it. You know, I should probably figure out what's going on with this paragraph, maybe something like that. Um, so if you do hear issues about your pacing, that's not always a guarantee that your pacing is bad. If you do hear things about your pacing from multiple people, then it probably is a pacing issue. But um, yeah, if it's just one person saying it, it might not be a, a big deal. Um, but I do like I do like her her little advice there. That's a good one. All right, that'll do it for me here tonight. Appreciate you guys stopping by. You guys have a good night. Happy reading.